Hello! Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome back if you're uh, someone who has watched me talk about books already. Uh, if you're new here, uh, welcome. My name's Tim. Uh, I talk about books on here sometimes. Um, it's been a couple of weeks since I've uploaded. Uh, I went on holiday. I went to Disneyland Paris with my kids and had an amazing time, but it was knackering. Um, now back to the real world, unfortunately, that's not full of princesses and heroes and villains. Well, the real world has villains, but anyway. I read A Snake Lies Waiting by Jin Yong. This is book three in the Legends of the Condor Heroes series. Book three of four. Uh, these were published originally in the 1950s and have only just been translated into English. Uh, these are it's called wuxia uh, novels and it's all about kung fu. Think Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, think House of Flying Daggers, that kind of thing. Um, it's set in, I want to say like 1400s China, um, where there is the Jin Empire has invaded from the north uh, and taken over quite a lot of China. You still have the Song Empire underneath, and then you've got the Genghis Khan and the Mongolian Empire coming in from the top. So the Jin are kind of being squeezed. Um, and this, okay, first of all, it's a five star read. I've loved every single one of these books. I think they're super cool. I think the the prose style is very, quite classic, um, and I love how they describe the Kung Fu, because it's all about learning different moves, and it's like, oh, I countered that with this move, and your mind can help fill in the blanks. Um, and these guys are wushu masters, and they could do crazy things. Um, this is definitely the most filler book, though. This is definitely a book three or four. Um, usually... That means that it's just setting things up for the finale. And I still have, and that's usually quite telegraphed. Um, but this, I still have no idea where it's going to go. And that's one thing I really like about it. So let me, uh, we ca we follow our main character, Guo Jing. Um, the end, again, blah, 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 blah. These all follow on. These are... It's one story told in four volumes rather than four distinct books. This picks up exactly where the last book went off, uh, goes off. So the end of the last book, spoilers, um, they had done a load of stuff on Peach Blossom Island. And the hero, Guo Jing, and his uh, Shifu, his, one of his masters, uh, one of the five great martial masters, uh, Count Seven Hong of the Beggar Clan of the North, um, and Guo Jing's sworn brother, Zhu Butong, are travelling on a boat with the uh, another one of the great masters. No, 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 they're on a boat trying to cat chase after other people on a boat. But anyway, the boat is on fire, the boat is sinking, and immediately there's a huge kung fu match between two of the great martial masters in the world. The Beggar of the North and the Venom of the West. And they're fighting, and it's really... Oh, it's so cool. It takes up, like, a hundred pages, this fight, on this boat. Varying levels of escalation and changing, and, oh, the boat's sinking, now the boat's on fire, now they're fighting on a smaller boat, now they're fighting on here, now they're fighting in the water, now this is happening, now this is happening, this is happening. Super cool. Um, it's all... You see how the Venom of the West, who is kind of the villain, he is very dishonourable, and he's on fire, and Count Seven Hong... Uh, saves him because he's like, I want to beat you fairly. I don't want to beat you because the boat's on fire. So he actually rescues him and then the Venom of the West is like, well, now I'm going to stab you. And then he Venoms him and you see real threat here. Um, so histo like most of these books, not many people die uh, at all. It's like, oh, they're really injured, but I can push the Venom out because of my amazing Kung Fu skills. But this is Count Seven Hong is, like, really laid flat. And he can't do anything. They have to carry him. Um, they get stuck on a desert island. There's a whole section on a desert island. Uh, and then... So that takes up quite a lot of the book. Eventually they get off the desert island. And they end up... You end up everyone back in 
Ox Village, which is this tiny little village where Guo Jing was born. Where at the beginning of the first book you had Sky Fury Guo, Guo Jing's father, and Ironheart Yang, Yang Kang's father, uh, fought and died. Or one of them died. And so everything starts coming together here. You see, it's a, like, if it wasn't written this kind of classic mythic style, you'd think, this is stupid. Why are all of these people in this tiny town at the same time? But because of the style of it, you just you just go with it. You're like, this is this is myth. This is ancient stories. This is how it would happen. Um, so you then end up with about 250 pages of uh, Guo Jing and his love, the love of his life, Lotus Wang, having to do this meditation for seven days and seven nights. And they can't be disturbed, otherwise they both might die because of kung fu reasons uh and they just hear these people come into this tiny little inn over and over and over again and then they fight and then these people fight and then these people fight and it's bringing people back from book one it's bringing and so many characters come in and the kung fu there is crazy and people fall in love whilst kung fuing um against each other and then they join in team to fight other people it's just it's super cool it's super cool. Um, and in the end, they kind of resolve this. And one thing that I said in my last review for A Bond Undone, book two, is I really wanted to see what happened to Yang Kang, the person who was the sworn brother of Guo Jing, but was raised by the Jin prince. So he's he was raised by the bad guys. And they adopted him and they raised him. And then he found out he was actually the son of a good guy. I'm going to say good and bad. Who knows? Um, the book makes you think the Jinns are bad guys. Uh, and it's like, he makes a choice. Do I go with my adopted father who raised me and gave me lots of really nice things and I can have power and influence and live in a palace and rule the land? Or do I go with my birth father who was someone I didn't know and put me in this position of swearing me to be a brother of someone I don't know and I don't agree with, uh, but it feels like it's the right thing to do. And that was really interesting dilemma in book, the last book. And he chooses. He chooses the luxury. He chooses to be a prince. And I thought there'd be a bit more like, oh, what's going on? Is he going to go back? He may go back. I don't know. But at this time, he is like the biggest villain. And it's great. It's really good to see them like doing all of these despicable things. He's a great villain. He's really, he's so good. And he just uses his words and the pure confidence of coming from wealth uh, to be able to just blag his way. And he, um, and his Kung Fu is good, but nowhere near as good as anyone else's. So he, as soon as the fighting starts, he gets found out very quickly. Um, Lotus Huang, uh, the female lead, has a lot to do in this. Uh, the whole like last third of the book, uh, last hundred odd pages, is her taking ownership of one of these great clans of Kung Fu masters, because she was um, she was given it. She was like, here you go, you are now the ruler of this clan. And she uh, gets captured, and they don't believe her, and she has to prove herself, and she uses the Kung Fu that only the master would teach. Um, and super, it was so cool. Um, and then you have Guo Jing is... Uh, more in conflict, in crisis, because he loves Lotus Wang, but he has made uh, an agreement with Genghis Khan to marry his daughter. Uh, and this comes back in this, and Guo Jing makes a decision, because he is, <clears throat> he's very, we know three things about him. He's very good at Kung Fu, he's not very bright, and he is full of honour. And so he does the honourable thing, even though that makes him miserable. Um, so we'll see where that comes because he has put himself into a position that he didn't, he doesn't want to be in. No one wants him to be in that position, but he does because that's what he promised and he delivers what he promises. Um, so yeah, I love, I love everything in this. Um, I, as I said, I gave it five stars. I could see why if you were mm, about this series so far, I can imagine this would be the worst book for you because... So much of it takes place on a sinking on fire ship, then on a desert island, and then in 
with the main characters in a room listening into lots of stuff happening, and then you've got the final section with with the clan. So in your Viking, like, oh, it's a bit silly, it's a bit ridiculous how all these people come together. Um, a bit like how people complain about that with Les Mis, how everyone just keeps bumping into each other. Um, it's like that. Uh, but I do, and, and it's in terms of locations, it's not very grand. Uh, because it is mainly on a boat in those three, four locations. Compared to the previous story, which goes all across China. But in terms of locations, it's not very big. But in terms of storylines, I think it is quite vast. And you have more of the Mongol invasion. You have um, more of the Jin Song conflict. Uh, you have a character who was introduced in the last book and was like a novelty funny character and now is really dangerous. And you find out why that is, which I thought was very cool. And you have the the love triangles convoluted romance mess. So yeah, um, I've got one book left, which is called... A Heart Divided, which makes me feel like, I, I don't know, I've got no idea how this is going to end. No idea at all. And I don't want to know until I read it, and it's great. Uh, I'll probably read that. Not this month. I want to take a bit of a break, read some other stuff, and then I'll try and read it by the end of the year. Because these you need to read really quick, close in succession. I even found with this, he was linking back stuff into book one, which I hadn't read for like three, four years. And I was like, who is that? But luckily there's a big list of characters at the front. Um... To help with that but uh yeah five stars for me um though if you were reading this series and you didn't like this one i'd get it but for me i don't care about those things i just think it's super cool and i'll read i hope they translate more of this of uh, jin yong's work i really do because i thought this was super cool anyway please give this video a like it does help please comment below i will reply to all the comments and if you like this video please subscribe i'm on 39 subscribers now uh so like you know it's mr beast here and then i'm just here so uh hopefully i can catch up but if i could get to 50 that would be amazing i'd be so happy if i got to 50 anyway i'll see you later bye